Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is going to be episode 17 for Building Theed. This is going to be a compilation of everything I got done last week, as well as this week. There was no video last week, just because that work week was insane. I had very little time to actually sit down and film, so this week is going to be a long and in-depth video on all of the progress I've got done and obviously the finished first half of the mock. So before we get started, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. Let's get right into it. So starting off this week, the first thing that I did was revisit the dome from last video. I had said that I wanted to make it a little bit bigger, kind of bring it out the sides, make them match up better with the tan ring that I made that goes on top of the building. And that is exactly what I did. Basically the previous version of the dome was an eight by 10. So I went ahead and made this a 10 by 12 and it definitely worked way better. And the nice thing also with making a bigger dome is you have more room to make it seem a little bit more rounded. And the other thing is I went through and added in some olive green, which I really, really, really like. I think this looks amazing. Definitely helps break up just the solid sand green and it makes it easier on the eyes when you're looking at it. There's a bunch of different kind of patches of olive green and I tried to vary them as much as I could. And another thing which I wish I was able to do a little bit more of, but I'm still happy that I was able to do it at all is these two right here. I was able to use the one by two tiles and slide them. So there's a little bit more of a rounded shape on the corners or on the sides here. And I really, really like the way that looks. I wish I was able to do more of it, but I was not. So I'll take what I can get. But I think just in general, this looks way better. And then the bottom is the same. Didn't change anything there. Still got the two by three that will attach onto the jumper plates on the rest of the building. And then if I take this off, I did have to come up with a weird technique or design to get this to connect in the center. And then to get the height to be correct, I had to add in a half a plate. So then basically the way I did that was using inverted brackets and then more inverted brackets here connected with tiles. And then this all meets in the middle in the two by two section. So this can now fit into the bottom. And then when I take this bottom section, I can kind of put it in the middle and it's a little bit funky but once you get it lined up you just pop it together and now this is flush with the bottom which is nice because now it's not stressing in or out so it all sits on perfectly so once i go ahead and finish up the round building i'll be able to just sit this right on top and that will be the roof so i'm really really happy with this it was a lot of figuring out but i'm super happy with the final design
So I know you guys are probably excited to look at that explosion, but before we get there, there's a few things that I have to talk about. Number one, I completely had to redo this building. Basically, what I had realized is that the buildings, all of the buildings on my mock so far, don't scale well with Daniel's at all. His most recent building is, I think, a good scale for minifigures, and his was around 22 bricks tall. And on my mock, the smallest one, or the shortest one, is like 27 or 28. And the spacing between the windows and the floors is way too large for minifigures. This one, you can tell the spacing in between the windows is a lot smaller. And I also changed up the window design. Before, this was three plates and then two plates on top. Now it's two plates on the bottom and two plates at the top. So I made the window actually a little bit smaller as well. So all of those things coupled together give a much more compact and, in my opinion, better looking building. And I went ahead and made the roof two times taller, like how Daniel had it on his. As you can see here, there's two of the wedge plates now stacked on top of each other. So that's a little bit of like a cheat to make it seem a little bit taller but without, you know, using a ton of bricks. And bricks is the main driving factor for all of this. I was basically out of them when I kind of realized my mistake. So basically now I'm going to go and change all of the windows and doors and everything to be smaller. I changed up the door also on this building, so I made it a little bit shorter. And I think everything now is kind of the way I want it to be. I think these are going to scale way better with figures than the previous ones. So I'll go ahead and kind of spin this thing around to the front and show you guys what it looks like. All right, so obviously now you can see the explosion over on the left, but just quickly before we get there, this is the Padme minifigure that I'm going to be using in the mock. And as you can see, she now fits much closer to the size of the door. It actually looks like it was designed for a minifigure to go through there and also now saying that this is kind of the ceiling if a minifigure is standing on the wall this is kind of more of the right spacing for you know the next story or the next level however you want to call it and i think also the windows look a little bit better being smaller so this is definitely the approach that i'm going to be taking and then the last thing that i added on before I finished this building was the vines, which are not new by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely add a lot to this. So this over here is kind of curling over to this side and the vine all the way on the other side is kind of the same thing. So they're kind of on each corner, which I think is good because now every wall has some bit of vines and I only had to do two little ones. So I think I'm gonna be able to conserve a lot more pieces just kind of by every metric. So this is definitely the best kind of meeting or compromise for all of those different aspects of buildings and i do have lights in the windows which it's probably not going to show up too crazy but you can kind of see the faint glow and i'll go ahead and turn off the lights later on but i do have the lights wired up for this building so that's pretty cool and then the only other thing is the design that i started out with for the bottom with this kind of trim going around i actually really like it However, the only problem with it was the way that the windows were. I actually had to go through and make this little cutout, which I don't think looks bad. This was definitely better than having it kind of stay at this height and just having this be like a really small mini window. So I actually don't mind that. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'll add in some kind of shrubbery or greenery growing in those little corners there where I have studs. And I think that will kind of make that look pretty nice. But everything is set with this building and i'm very happy to be able to say that because i think now this is the only building so far that is done done the other ones shouldn't be too much of a challenge to kind of just retrofit and make it a little smaller but this one is officially done and i do have some nice details this i went through and added in a lot more detail as you can kind of see if i zoom out you can see there's more of the modified bricks and i have those ingot pieces and studs and everything so it's a little bit more densely packed than the previous buildings which i like a lot and it's going to match up better with daniel's side of the mock as well and then this was kind of cool this is like a snot section coming this way and then also on the other side it's now coming this way so there's a quarter plate or half plate inset right here 
and it's just a nice texture going through so that was pretty cool but i think that this is a pretty good look for this building and definitely kind of the right track that i want to be going on for the rest of the buildings so now with all that out of the way we can finally take a look at the explosion all right getting into the explosion this is definitely the best explosion i've made i made one of this similar style to this about three years ago and I haven't made any since then because that one was so good for back in the day when I made it and I didn't want to try and make another one and have it not look quite as good. So I've held off until now. This one I think is definitely better. There's more of the debris coming off the wall and everything looks a little bit more three-dimensional and realistic. So one of the driving factors that made me want to do this is because I'm using lights, as you guys know in this mock and that is such a cool look when you have an explosion lit up it just makes it look so much cooler so that was probably the biggest driving factor of doing this and i think it's also just going to add a lot to the mock in general but coming around to the front you can kind of see what it looks like and i can go ahead and turn on the lights so you can't really see that much right now because i have my studio lights on but if i go ahead and pop them off like that you definitely can see the glow and I really really like this I think it looks so fantastic this is definitely the best explosion that I've made and I think it really looks realistic definitely kind of has the right shaping and especially with all the debris flying off in all those different directions I think it definitely looks like an explosion I tried to make it so that the blast is kind of coming right in the middle so now all of the stuff is getting blown out in these two directions like it hit right in the corner and now this side of the wall is shooting out that way and this side is shooting out that way so that's why most of the concentration is on the left and the right and then I have some tan just scattered on the ground as well as kind of going up onto the building around it just kind of defining it as much as I can and then the main section right in the middle is a 4x4 dish piece in trans orange and then I have a bionicle piece i believe up here which is kind of like the secondary ball of explosion or whatever you want to call it and then i have some red lightsaber bars and some clear antennas that kind of come out in all different directions kind of like the spires or spines that you see shooting off of explosions and that's what all of the debris is connected onto so everything on this turned out basically exactly the way that i wanted it to I think the shaping of this turned out really, really nicely. So I'll go ahead and turn on the lights and give you guys kind of a better look. All right, so basically what we're looking at is the center of the explosion. This is, as I said, the four x four dish. And as you can kind of see underneath it, there are some cheese slopes going up in like a V shape kind of forming around it. And then I built up around the top of this kind of tracing out the shape with some different snot techniques coming around and adding in a bunch of those flying off pieces. And I used a bunch of those Marvel clear pedestal pieces to attach some of the closer debris pieces. And I think it actually worked out really well. And then over here, this is the Bionicle piece. And I kind of cut it into the wall with that cheese slope, which turned out really nice. And then on top, I just chucked that little dish piece kind of just simulating the top of it giving it more of a round look and feel and then way back in there I added in an orange piece just so that when you kind of look through all that you see behind the explosion is more orange and then kind of getting a look at all of the debris just scattered around the ground and on the building and everything like that everything it just looks so nice like it came together way better than I was really expecting so I'm really happy with that and the way that this is connected, as you can see at an angle, is actually using a clear minifigure neck bracket. And it hooks in to the handle of a cup. So I can kind of demonstrate that. Basically, here is your cup. This handle will hook into the neck piece like this. And it just hooks on where the neck would go. And that holds it in place. And also, obviously, gives me some wiggle room. So that was the idea. It was the easiest way that I could think of to connect it. And it also worked out really nicely because everything in there is clear. So the lights shining through are not obstructed by solid pieces. So that is this building. And I'm actually really happy with it. 
turned out really, really nice. I went ahead and added in some cheese slopes up here. And I think it actually works really nice because it kind of brings out the side of the wall, kind of similar to the border trim going around the bottom. So I think that works nicely there. And then obviously we got the vines and just the weathering on the rest of the house. But this is the first completed building of this mock. And these ones over here, I have yet to retrofit. But as you can kind of see, you can kind of tell that the spacing between the floors is way too big as well as that door. I mean, look how tall that thing is compared to this. This is definitely more of the look that I wanna go for. So I have finished this building. This was basically a complete rebuild. I was hoping that I'd be able to just kind of pull it apart, take out some pieces and then put it back together. That didn't really work out though. So basically this was a complete from the ground up rebuild. I did take out one of the studs of the door. So now this is the same height as the other building which is good and then i dropped this down a little bit so now this is lower to the ground which i think is going to look better especially when you kind of compare it to a minifigure it will look more like an alleyway it's still pretty high but it's going to look more like an alleyway than it did before this is the same door though that stayed the same i added in the vines kind of going up around the corners this one i have kept from the previous design so I kept this one made it a little shorter though and then I kept this big weathered section I just dropped it down a little bit and then I dropped this kind of compacted everything looks like I'm actually missing one of these up here so I'll stick that on there dropped everything down kind of condensed it all same thing with over on this section so there is a window underneath here you can't really see it because of this I cheated this down as much as I could without kind of covering up this window entirely, but I also didn't want it to cover up the window on top of it because I think that would look weirder. So this is kind of the best that I could do, the best placement, but I don't think it looks bad. And then it's got the same roof as the other building as well and kind of the same steps going up to it. So this one is very similar to the previous building, although I did not go and add the trim going around which I think is a good decision because it lets me have the flower boxes which is cool I definitely like that and also obviously this has the bridge that's going to connect to the round building so it's different enough from the other building but it still obviously looks similar so I'll go ahead and add this back into the mock and then the last building to tackle is the round one finally I have finished this thing this took me definitely the longest amount of time. You guys already saw the top part. I already explained all that, so I won't really go into that. Basically, this one, I liked the shape of it, and I didn't want to try and figure out how to cram this down, chop out the top floor, and then have it still kind of look right. So what I did was I decided to just keep the height pretty much. I did go ahead and actually take off four studs, so it is a little bit shorter, but the overall height is basically the same. What I did was I made it three stories though. So I kept the same kind of spacing from the windows and the door and floors and all that kind of stuff. So this took me such a long time though. This one I didn't actually have to rebuild as much as the last one. The last one was basically a complete rebuild of the entire thing. This one wasn't so much of a rebuild but I did have to change all of the windows. I had to get into here and change this window and I built up this side and there was a lot of just changes that I had to make. And the most difficult part of this, honestly, what took the longest was making the structure on the inside. So I can go ahead and pop off this top section here. It's just attached to two jumper plates that I'll show you guys basically I can now take this and I can hold it and I can even, I don't know where I want to hold this from, but I can even flip it upside down. And that's actually kind of a, maybe a good way to show the structure. Can't really see anything cause it's all like dark, but as you can see, there's a space now open in the middle. Basically, the way I made this was by attaching plates like this and making a square with just a hole going through the center. And then I'd build up bricks 
and then every once in a while I'd have a brick or a plate kind of shooting off, connecting to the side, and then coming back in and attaching. And this was such a pain. This took me like two days to do, but I'm very happy with it. In the end, I was able to come up with a very strong structure for this. So now I can pick it up all by just the top section, which is really, really nice. I don't have to worry about trying to hold the sides and have them cave in or have all of the kind of round parts pop off. So I'm very, very happy with this. And then the top just attaches with the same two by three like before onto the jumper plates and it just sets in there like that. So this building is finally done. I'll go ahead and give you guys like a 360 view. This side, as you can see, what I did was, if you guys remember a couple updates back, I had the kind of trouble or the issue, whatever you want to call it, of this top section being the plates right up here, and I couldn't add in another window, which was ultimately why I didn't have this thing even taller than it is. So basically what I did was I moved up this door because I was able to build that right up to the snot section and I stuck a window right underneath it like this so that's why the balcony on this side is on the top floor and on the other building it's on the second floor but I think this works out okay it's not really a big deal I mean obviously every building is going to be a little bit different so I don't think that's a problem at all and I still think it looks pretty good you got the three floors and everything I am going to change out this little tile here for just another tan one that was from a previous version of this house and then over on this side i do have the same medium nougat door that i've had for a while and then i added in a window on top so finally i have this thing done and the nice thing also now is the window on this side lines up with this it is now part of the third story so we have the same first story that we've always had and this was something that i don't really know if i talked about in depth but because of the way that i was doing it originally this window would have been a couple plates or bricks higher than the one on the front side so now that these are all kind of on the same level i'm so pleased with this this is this turned out exactly the way i had it envisioned it originally in my first kind of when I was planning out everything this is exactly the way that I was envisioning this building so I'm really really happy with it so now I can go ahead and finally add this thing back into the mock and hopefully everything lines up and there's no more issues and then this side will be completely done I do have to probably reassemble the trees because they kind of fell off when I took off that greenery section to kind of separate plates and stuff so I will have to fix that, but I'll get all this stuff sorted and figured out, and then I'll show you guys the full completed half of the mock. So before I put everything back together, because I made the round building an extra story, I had to add in another light because I only had two going into this building originally. So what I did was I pulled up some of the tiles surrounding here, and then I have my access panel right here that I can just pop off like this. So I pulled off some of these tiles here and I snuck another light in there and then I can go ahead and cover this back up. And basically what I did was because I made the hollow center for the round building, I was able to just do one singular column of the two by two bricks going all the way up, which is way easier than the one by two weird pillory column things that I had going on before. Now I can just have one central column so now I'm going to add this back on and I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, so I have it set back in and it goes in so much easier this way because now I don't have to try and swing it different ways as I put it down. I can just keep it centered and slide it in. So I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit. So before I turn the lights on, I'm gonna go ahead and put the roof back on like that. And then I'll turn off my studio lights so now I can turn on the lights and they shine through. Up here is a yellowish orange and then this one is more orangey. This is a very bright yellow because the only colored brick in front of the light was that yellow. All right, guys, I have finally completed and set up everything on the first half of this mock. And it has taken me a very long time to get to this point, but
but I'm super excited to be able to show you guys the first half of the. So I'll go ahead and zoom out and show you guys what it looks like. This is the completed first half of the mock. I put the trees back on and I made a few modifications to them as I was doing it. They are a bit of a pain to get set up, but I added in a few more sections of leaves, just making them feel a little bit more full. And then I got that section set up. And I know you guys are probably thinking, Ethan, you spent like three or four months making half of a mock and now you have less than one month to do the other half. What exactly are you going to do about that? So basically, the reason I'm not super stressed about it is because I have three more buildings to build and I think two of them should be pretty easy. The third one is going to be the archway, which is going to be a little bit more challenging, but I don't think it's going to give me much trouble. And then the rest is just doing the road which is time consuming, but it's not very parts intensive or anything. It's all a bunch of the same pieces, so I'll be able to knock that out hopefully pretty fast as long as I just kind of sit down and power through it. That shouldn't be an issue. So I think I should be okay. I gave myself plenty of time to figure everything out before now starting this section. So I think I should be all right with that. Just have to kick it into high gear and sit down and build it all. So I think I should be all right for the second part, but for now, let's just focus on the first part, starting with the left side of the mock. So all the way on the left, this was the first part of the mock that we built. This has the corner section at an angle that gave me a few weeks of trouble, just trying to figure everything out with that. And then the building here, this was a couple different iterations going into this, but I finally figured out a version that I'm happy with and then moving across the bridge to the round building. This was one that I spent a few weeks on as well. This has the round part as well as the normal straight part with the nice tiled roof. And I'm really happy with this building. This is definitely my favorite of the buildings that I've made so far. And then I just added on that nice roof to finish it off. And then moving over to the greenery section. This was another part that took a few weeks just because of the arch part actually getting it to sit level with the road and sit nicely in there and then obviously the trees being another part that i had to figure out but i'm really happy with this it turned out basically exactly the way that i was envisioning so i'm really really happy with the final product i think the trees look really nice and then also just that little planter box that they're kind of sitting in fits in really nicely with the rest of the mock and then moving over to the final building that I've built so far. This one is probably my second favorite building just because of how beautiful it looks with the explosion. And also I really like the border trim going on the bottom. So I'm really happy with all of these so far. The only thing that I might do is add in a little bit of a vine to the front because right now this middle building is a little bland. I have a bunch of the dark tan weathering, but I think it needs a little bit of a vine. So I might go through and add that back in. But as for right now, this is finally completed. And just before we end the video, I will go ahead and turn off my studio lights and turn on the lights in the mock and just give you guys kind of a look at what that looks like. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up episode 17 of Building Feed. Like I said, this was a huge video. This is probably the longest video I've done so far for Feed, maybe ever on my channel, to be honest. If you guys made it till the end of the video, make sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing if you guys liked it and are interested in following Feed all the way up until its completion. And if you guys are interested in the lights that I'm using in this mock, they are Light My Bricks. And I have a link that will give you $10 off your first purchase with Light My Bricks. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.